Hey folks, welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel and yet another wintry off-road showdown. So today we are going to compare the Nissan Frontier with the Jeep Gladiator. Now that is the fully loaded Pro 4X model, whereas over here, that's a Willys package. That brings along a whole bunch of off-road goodies and we got to get out there on the trail and see how these two compare right now. Let's start by looking at the powertrains. Over here in the Frontier, we have the most powerful mid-size pickup truck. That's a 3.8 liter naturally aspirated V6, making 310 horsepower, 281 pound-feet of torque, and it is sent through a nine-speed automatic transmission, and of course, four-wheel drive. Now over here on the Gladiator, the recipe is basically the same. This is also a naturally aspirated V6. This is a 3.6 liter. Total output here on the Jeep, 285 horsepower, 260 pound-feet of torque, and it is sent through one less gear. This is an eight-speed auto. Let's talk about the models we have here today. In front of me is the Nissan Frontier Pro 4X. Here in Canada, this is a top trim Frontier. Now, when you go Pro 4X, what are you getting? Well, things like all-terrain tires, unique styling, a full skid plate package underneath, a rear locking differential, and then a few styling things on the interior as well. Plus, our truck has the leather luxury package, so yes, we have some nice leather seats in there. Total price for the truck you're looking at right here is $51,700 here in Canada. Now let's go look at the Gladiator and we will see what it's worth and what it has. Let's dive into the Gladiator. And first, you need to tell me how you pronounce that name up on the hood. Is it Willys or Willis? I've heard it both ways. My understanding is that it was Mr. Willis who initially started the company, and then over the years it has morphed into Willys. But please let me know which one you prefer and which one you think it is. I'm going with Willie for the purpose of this video because it's funnier sounding. So when you go for the Willys package, you're getting things like these 32 inch mud terrain tires. That's gonna make a big difference off-road. You're getting a whole bunch of different decals, including the Willys decal on the hood, and then a four wheel drive decal out back. Uh, a whole bunch of different convenience features like a power tailgate lock, sun visors with lights in them, uh, body color two piece fender flares, the track lock limited slip rear differential. That one will also definitely play a part in what we are doing out here today. Um, and then the rest of it is interior stuff, things like power heated exterior mirrors and power windows. So going for Willys once again is going to take a very basic Gladiator and bring along a little bit more comfort, convenience, and off-road prowess. The question is though, what does it cost? So for the truck, as you see it here today, we're talking about $68,860 Canadian. So it's quite a bit more expensive than that Nissan over there. And it just doesn't quite have all of the features that that truck does. So I guess now the question becomes, when we hit the trail, is the real difference gonna be, you know, $15,000 worth of, of off-road goodness? Well, we're gonna find out. One last thing before we start driving, let's hit the off-road numbers just to see how these two compare on paper. And actually they're fairly similar. Here on the Jeep Gladiator, we have 10 inches of ground clearance and its biggest advantage, a 40.8 degree approach angle. The front end of that Gladiator really is up tall. Now one of the disadvantages here on the Gladiator is the wheelbase and that gives us a breakover angle a little bit over 19 degrees. Out back on the Gladiator, you're talking about a departure angle of 25 degrees. Now rolling over here to the Nissan, overall ground clearance here 9.4 inches pretty good and not too much uh, lower than that Jeep is but really the approach angle is the big difference here on the Frontier 32.3 degrees that's a 8 degree difference talking a breakover angle the Frontier is a little bit better at 19.6 degrees and then departure angle a little bit worse at 23 and a half. So all the numbers are pretty similar. I am curious to see how the approach angles affects us to sit today to see if the Nissan is really kind of dragging its front end. And like I said, now I'm done talking, let's go drive. 
Now, the other thing we always have to talk about, especially with winter wheeling, are the conditions. It's minus 12 degrees Celsius right now, so the snow is really crunchy and it actually is giving us grit. If this snow, if it was like 2 degrees Celsius, we would be miserably stuck because this snow is so deep and when it gets soft, it has no grip to it at it, all. It's right? an interesting snow today too because we're coming off a warm week going back into a frigid week. So below that top layer is also some pretty, I would almost describe it as marbly yeah, ice snow, which is okay as long as you have some speed. We've been doing pretty good so far today. Oh, this looks a little ugly. <laughs> yeah, it's a little hairy. Get through, oh yeah. Oh, it's a mud under there. You broke right through. <laughs> all right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, it is just to say that always the conditions are important when off-roading but in the winter time i feel like you have to be especially in tune with what the temp is what kind of snow you have oh, like you sure. said what's underneath the snow and ice all of that sort of stuff yeah well and you can see underneath the ice earlier this earlier in our drive today and that's what we did we actually went out to a place called tracy's meadow tracy's our mom so we yep. named it after her yep shout and, out our mom <laughs> and uh, we wanted to just play in the ice so you know what matt and i both did that in both trucks so let's cut to that now. now ladies and gentlemen we're not trying to fool you today this water's not very deep my boot is on the ground right there but this ice is insanely thick I'm calling it at least three inches thick. So uh, yeah, these are huge sheets of ice, which these vehicles have to uh, navigate. Definitely makes traction, finding traction, pretty tricky. So we're just crashing around here in the meadow. And so far, so good. I'm in this Gladiator Willys. And the first impression that you always get behind the wheel of a Gladiator or a Wrangler for that matter, it's just that the engineers were thinking about off-roading when they set out to design this vehicle. And I know that because I have this tall seating position. I can really see everything around me. Uh, proportionally, the Gladiator is kind of tall and skinny, and I like the, the skinny width of it out here. It really feels tight and like it can squeeze down some small trails. So yeah, just the basics on the Gladiator sort of feel more off-road ready. And then of course, I do have better numbers here. I mentioned that approach angle, huge deal today because you can't drag your nose into ice. If you try to crack ice with your bumper, bad things are gonna happen to your vehicle. And so far, so good here on the Gladiator, these big tires are just keeping it up above that ice. Alrighty, so we're over here in the Pro 4X now. You just saw Steve running around in the Jeep Gladiator in this field. Now, he definitely had the tire advantage, but I've got the, he broke some of the bigger ice advantage. So let's see how this goes. First things first, I gotta back out of this bad spot I got myself into here. In our initial shot. Okay, into the deep stuff, right here. Yeah. All right, all right. Traction control kind of hampered me a little bit there. So, we're gonna shut that off. Okay, now, let's see if we can get going. So there's, not water's not too deep, but this ice is gnarly. We got some chunks that are three or four inches thick out here today. Whoa! All right, we got in a bit of a hole there. Let's see if I can get myself out. Yeah, we're working it back and forth, back and forth. No, I'm on a rut, or I'm on a, come on. Oh, I see. Okay, I've got a bit of an ice wall I've pushed up here. All right, come on. Let's go. Let's go, skid plate. Okay, my skid plate seems to be my enemy today. Okay, yeah, I've put up a bit of an ice wall in front of the truck now. So I'm going to try and get around it here somewhere. Right here? Sure, let's try. All right, we got through it, we got around it. Now we're into the not so deep stuff, but oh man. You know what? Besides that skid plate kind of hanging me up back there, this thing is really walking, this ice. I was afraid. I figured the Jeep with those tires, no problem, but this thing, we were definitely gonna struggle. And uh, <laughs> it's impressed me so far in this ice. Crashing through the deep snow today to get to some of our trails, some of them were inaccessible. The hydro line would have been an absolute dig out disaster. So we didn't go down there and uh, we tried to get to the left hook, but that was also just not going to happen. But what we did have available to us was Cripple Hill. So we took both trucks down there. They did really well. Check that out now. Right, 
We're here on the Cripple Hill Trail. We're gonna head down from the low side and head towards the hill to climb it. Uh, we did walk it first to see, because we haven't been back here yet this winter, but it just looks like a little bit of remaining snow and the odd downed log. So we are approaching the first turn here. And this is with the first log climb. Okay, now I should mention we're just running four high here in the Jeep currently. Nice, good climb. Didn't even care with those tires up and over. Yeah, there's the back. Perfect. Okay, now this is the tight turn. And this is the fun one because you got to get it tight and then get it set up right away for the hill. So, nice tight turn. And I'm going to clear that rock there. Yeah, my You're spoiler, clear. Steven, totally with his clear. camera, doing a wonderful job. All right. And now, the turn. Climb that rock back there. Right there it is. Good. Okay, and now here we go on the hill. A little bit of speed. No, you know what? We're just going to crawl it. The snow's not too bad. And I've got lots of options for my line. All right, not too bad at all. Honestly, that was really well done. Really well done, Jeep. At no point was I worried about it. Throttle management was great. That was a heck of a run. Let's uh, go jump in the Nissan with Steve and see how he does. All right, folks, now it's time for the frontier here on Cripple Hill, as we call it. And we call it that because it has crippled pickup trucks in the past, just if you were wondering. So you saw the Gladiator go through. It didn't struggle at all. I'm curious to see if my clearance is good on this log, first of all. And then second of all, the Frontier is not the best handling, most maneuverable midsize truck. So I am curious to see how my maneuverability is through the trees here. There's my log. Nice. Beautiful. Bumped right up and over. Didn't even have wheel spin. These all-terrains have actually been better than Matt and I both expected. Now this is the tricky part. You gotta try to avoid the big rock at the front end while also avoiding that tree at your back end. I think I got it. Yeah, I'm clear of the rock. But now, you gotta cut back driver's side and try to make it up the hill. Oh no, I might need a correction. I might need a little correction. And this is, you know what, part of it's the driver, I'll admit it. <laughs> but part of it is the fact that the, ah, yeah, I got to. Part of it is the fact that the Jeep is a little bit more maneuverable. It's a little skinnier out here. It feels like it turns a little bit tighter and that is definitely making a difference. But now I'm lined up. I should be able to get up this hill. From a standing start, a little bit of spin. Ah, but no problem. Nicely done, Nissan. Now you have seen both of these trucks out there uh, performing on our trails. So we're here in the frontier. Let's just sort of offer our thoughts after doing all of this driving today, Matt. And I'll tell you my first big takeaway is I've been impressed with the tires here on the frontier. I think you looked at the mud terrains on the Gladiator and well, you kind of knew they were going to be pretty good. Oh, we're Ooh, getting a little hairy. A little squirrely there. <laughs> You, you knew the mud terrains on the Gladiator were going to be good, but then you looked at these Dynapro AT uh, tires and it was sort of like, they might be okay, but they're not that aggressive. And so far, we've been digging into this deep, crunchy snow and they're finding grip every single time. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say they're as good as the Jeep, but I would put them right there. You know, 90% maybe of what the Jeep is, at least today in these conditions. For sure. The, uh, the deeper lugs and those like almost paddle-like blocks on those tires helped out in this snow yeah. and I mean I don't think there's any shame in admitting it we broke the trails today with the Jeep yeah and then started true. running them with the Frontier <laughs> and I don't think that's a bad thing but we were both like if we get stuck so overall though everything I followed in in the Nissan and we did break a couple of sections of trail we did and it had no problems yeah. it may be a little more throttle effort maybe a little more spin but no problems yeah um, and you know what Matt that's enough in the frontier now why don't we get out of this truck go get in the Jeep and we will talk about it a little more let's go for another rip
Now we're here in the Gladiator, and I am running it down in four low, just like I ran the Frontier. And of course, I cannot lock up the differentials because there are no differentials to lock up. We have the limited slip out there in the back end, Matt. And I, I, in, in my head, the advantage to this setup is that there are no switches or buttons for me to touch. The limited slip is always working. Of course, the disadvantage is that a limited slip is not a locker. Eventually, it will allow those wheels to spin and one will get more power than the other, whereas the locker, you're gonna get that true 50-50 split. So there's no doubt the locker is better, but in two-wheel drive, the limited slip is still working, whereas with the Nissan, you have to be in four low to get to the locker. So there is you know, some advantages to having just the limited slip. And, and I've been noticing when we're chugging through the deep snow, you do see both rear tires actually turning. So definitely it's, it's doing it's, its job. It's doing here. its job for sure. There was a couple of the deeper sections where you kind of got that that hopping, that boom, boom, yeah. boom, as it was digging itself out, but you could feel it working and it never got stuck. And I will say another thing I'm noticing here, Matt, and, and once again, the numbers tell this story, the Nissan has more power, straight up. Like right now I'm in four low, and, and when I was running the Frontier, I had more direct power under my right foot. The Jeep here, I'm digging in. I'm digging in more every time to get to that power band. So the, not a huge difference. I think it's about 30 horsepower, but it's it's noticeable. It's noticeable on the trail for sure. Yeah. On road, they felt great. Yeah, But that's I not agree. what today's about. No. We have to look at what we have today and I think we keep coming back to the one thing. We keep coming back to, they both got through it, they both did okay, but what about the price? Yeah, I mean, this Gladiator is expensive. There's just no two ways around it. Um, and, and that was one thing the Frontier always used to be known for, was it was kind of the value truck in the segment. And when we're looking at these two, it's still absolutely offering you yeah. value because like we mentioned, a lot of that off-road gear, there's a locker there that's not here, but then just looking inside, the Frontier has wireless phone charging. The Frontier has adaptive cruise control that the Jeep doesn't have. The Frontier has leather seats that the Jeep doesn't have. We're just in cloth seats here, right? Because it's a base package. So when you look at the entire package, if you were now to come ask me, hey, which truck would you rather daily drive? I would take the Nissan because it has more features and on road it's as if not a little more comfortable than the Jeep. And then off road, yeah, I lean Jeep, but then you got to find that balance, right, Matt? So yeah, more, it, more it is, features on road, more money in your pocket in yeah. the Pro 4X is what I kept coming back to. Well, and then there's also the argument which all of the true off-roaders make, which is that if I could buy that Nissan and then spend 10 grand in aftermarket parts, it's going to be incredible and it's going to be way better than this Jeep is. So you know what? Uh, yeah, I think we, we've kind of really established that. Overall, if all you care about is going off-road, I think we still lean Gladiator. But let's be honest, most of us drive on road most of the time. So as a package, I think we're leaning Nissan. Although we do have to pick an overall winner, Matt. So let's uh, get out now and we'll deliberate a little bit more and we'll come up. We'll let you know. Well, folks, we have come to the end whoa. of this video. Whoa, whoa. Did we just both do the obligatory dad hand drop on hood <laughs> simultaneously? Well, when you're talking about your truck, you got to have your hand on the hood. I think we've hit a threshold here, folks. <laughs> All right, let's wrap it up. Well, yes, like I said, we've come to the end of this one. Well, the story with this Gladiator Willys is pretty simple. It's a solid off-road truck, but it's expensive, Matt. It just, I don't know if I can stomach the price tag. It was certainly the best feeling off-road, and we both thought that. We both said, this is confident. Yeah. We're gonna take it to break the trail. That's how confident we were with it. But I've been driving this thing for a week, and it's got all the creature comforts that I like, and it's got a price tag that I can stomach a little bit better. And I think we talked about it extensively on our drive. I think overall, we would both pick this Nissan here Absolutely. today. Yeah, I would have to go Frontier too. But of course, we now want to know what you think. So please go in the comments and let us know. Would you take the Nissan or the Jeep? As always, while you're down there, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member, and then come right back here to Truck King to see what we're testing next. See ya. If I put my hands on both hoods, it's double dad. <laughs>